Hello viewers and welcome back to Men of War Assault Squad 2. I'm your host Pew Pew Choo Choo once again. Today we're checking out a 3v3 on, I think Facility is the map's name, and it's supposed to be a, an 8v8 map, although I do believe the game automatically scales it down. I'm, um, for, for whatever reason, I'm under the impression that the game has uh, region locking, and uh, with that sort of said, I mean, I live... Uh, I live in the mountain uh, mountain time zone and for whatever reason I mean it's like I, I barely see anybody playing um, going uh, with that with that sort of uh, getting cast aside what that means is that I'm, I'm really just sort of playing whichever uh, rounds of games that I can I can see and uh, yeah pretty much that so with uh, this sort of said the game begins I bought a regular infantry squad and it looks like I am gonna be brawling it out with an American player over here it's a 3v3 I'm playing as uh, one of the three Soviet team players and my uh, my opponents here will be American um, yeah so very very odd game compositions I'm, I'm still used to the uh, the original games is as usual fashion of you know you, you either play as uh, axis versus allies or sometimes you get some of these unique uh, games is how I would put it I see these guys building their little sandbag walls so I can um, I can disrupt them with a few grenades like that and I, I can just really keep them busy over here so, um, yeah, uh, like just some of these really, really odd game setups have been occurring. It's not that big of a deal. It's just that um, it's just that it's hard to find anything to record um, with that delay or uh, with that problem going on. And another thing is that it's uh, it's very hard to record, uh, or rather, just record video in general. So. Um, I'm just going to try to harass these guys over here. Uh, one thing that was brought to my attention was the fact that the game has a new uh, point, um, not necessarily point system, but a new resource uh, system. You notice there on the side of the screen, I'm a little busy to hover my mouse over it right now, but you notice on the bottom of the screen, there's this portion over here that currently says 00 MP, although um, it implies that uh, they, they restructured the game so that once, once you've, um, you, you gain MP over the course of the game naturally that's your main primary resource and um, with that sort of said you do gain a fixed amount of it over time and as the game sort of goes on and on you'll also start to gain MP that you've uh, used back into your little resource pile as well so that is a new um, addition that I thought was kind of cool um, and it should make these games a little bit uh, faster flowing, meaning that saving resources isn't going to be that big of a... Is, is going to have less of a uh, importance in the game. I, I think inside the original title, what, uh, what you would typically do is that... Um, I think in the original game, in Assault Squad One, this didn't happen. But in the in the very you know first Men of War game, all of the MP you got and spent was permanent. You couldn't gain any more, um, so you did have a fair amount of uh, resource management there. And in the Assault Squad, they introduced a flat one MP back, so long as say uh, say you buy a tank and so it's worth 100 points, right? Um, if you lose that tank, you'll gradually get those 100 points back at a at a fixed pace of one per I think minute or per second, probably second as it makes more sense um so it looks like we control the uh the little rail yard right here um so that is good and i'm still trying to gain control over this point my opponent here just seems to be uh seems to be loving uh we're really rather trying to push up inside this area and i'm gonna read just my mg kind of over here so he has a little bit of a better location to cover this area and we can rotate these guys and we'll put some suppression down onto them so um, yeah, like as you as you can probably tell, I mean suppression does play a role inside the game. It's uh, it's it's not a it's not a prominent statistic sort of thing. It more or less happens. You see here that as soldiers sort of take fire, they'll they'll kneel or uh, they'll crouch behind objects, and that's kind of what it does. I'm rather surprised that these box covers uh, last so long. I would have expected them to break by now. Um, so another thing is that of course the MG. Uh, the machine gun plays a very, very dominant role inside the meta game currently, and that's sort of why I have uh, I have two of these guys right here. My opponent seems to be buying a ton of infantry, so he they probably have a few there. The neat the neat little thing about the American machine guns is that um, you know coming off of the first game, I remember the uh, they they are the Browning automatic rifle. That's the BAR. Um, they're definitely not as powerful as the other countries as is. is, is um, 
machine guns. But the good things about them is that they are very, very、uh, they they they're very very long lasting, and they're also very very cheap too.、Um, so, with that said, I expect the Americans to be、um, more of a nation that sort of presses forward with them and spams them more so than、uh, either the Russians or the、uh, the Germans at this point. Let's put some direct fire onto this guy. As you can see, most of the weapons inside the game, excluding the、uh, the tanks, it, it, the 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 aiming is really just you know there's there's a circle,、uh, a zone of、um, probability for hitting, and the the guns just sort of go from there.、Um, looks like they have my MG gunner just sort of fully suppressed right now. That's not necessarily that big of a problem. Um, as you can tell, right now we're at 26 out of 100 victory points needed for victory, and they are at zero. We control four victory points, and they control、uh, likewise two. And I see that there are some troops behind here, so I'm gonna arc a grenade again. Cooking grenades now、uh, is something that a lot of people are starting to do, which I like,、um, though. The the game does put up that little timer for you to、uh, check when those grenades are sort of、uh, ready and are and cooked off. Now I'm saving up for a tank right now because、uh, continuing off of、um, really the first game, I mean saving for tanks is a big portion of the game. And typically inside this,、uh, in in the Men of War series of games, I like to be reactionary. I, I just like to wait and、uh, really see what the、uh, opponent does. And I think that's a good way. I mean because right now,、um, because your resources are effectively an omni、uh, type of resource, it's、um, it's it's fairly liquid. Uh, we can just sort of save up these points and then really spend them on whatever counter that we need. So, for example, if the enemy here brings up more infantry, he's not going to be able to buy tanks, and I know that. So then I'll buy some sort of flak,、uh, flak gun or auto cannon, and that'll be fairly useful.、Uh, likewise, if he buys something, say like a tank, then I'm going to buy a tank destroyer, which will counter them. And the Americans here, they have the they have a wide variety of light tanks and light vehicles. So I'm.、Um, I, yeah, this is one of the BAR rifles I was talking about. I'm I'm a little hesitant to to really just call call what they're gonna do、um, right now with the current meta game and all, but、uh, my guess is that they're probably gonna get a tank up here soon. And what I'm waiting for is that、uh, I'm waiting for some of these guards, sniper troops to appear, or rather、um, get that cooldown out of the way, because those things will be fairly useful too. Now you used to be able to actually use these、uh, locomotives and stuff on the multiplayer maps too. It looks like they disabled that feature because、um, you could actually drive these things around, and I, <laughs> I sort of, I sort of saw it on the mini map here being a, a thing that is highlighted like a vehicle.、Um, What is my what is my teammate doing? Tab has bought himself a little T70 armored tank, so that's nice to know.、Um, they really want this point, and they really want it badly.、I'm、gonna buy some more、uh, some more infantry. I think we can keep them back with、uh, these two MGs.、It、looks like he's trying to throw something there,、um, but I'm not seeing anything. So it might be smoke. It might be、uh, grenades.、Um, perhaps the little ah yeah, he's deploying smoke. Smoke here inside the game. I I honestly don't know if、um, these people know, but、uh, it it doesn't actually function as smoke. It just reduces the amount of damage of the bullets going through it. Or、um, yeah. So so with that said,、um, it's not gonna do too much. And I'm gonna try to space my guys out a bit. I see our MG、uh, gunners are starting to run out of ammunition, so evidently they don't start off with very many bullets, which is rather unfortunate. But I can come over here, do a quick little inventory swap, and that'll give、uh, both of our MGs、uh, the ability to get back in action, which is nice. Looks like their rifleman has run out of ammunition. That's kind of weird, but all right. Um, let's see. What plays can we make? So they bought a Chaffee light tank, and that's、uh, that's not exactly a vehicle. That's too it's too powerful. Nothing that we necessarily have to worry about, unless it's trying to hit our MGs, of course. I can get our MG guy over here to just get down、um, onto the ground, so that'll shield him for the most part. I'm gonna try for another grenade here. Yeah, infantry is starting to worry. I, I see infantry being a lot more、um, crucial than. Uh, tanks inside this game, at least right now, when the meta game is still developing. I mean, inside the first game, tanks were were essentially the the absolute essential thing.、Um, if you were great with tanks, then you'd be great at the game. If you weren't so good at tanks, then eh. I mean, you could still be great with the infantry combat too. 
Um, they bought a Chaffee light tank, which is a vehicle that I didn't see a lot from the first game, mainly because of the fact that it was it was more expensive than the Stuart tank, or if not, at a comparable price point. Um, and the problem with those things is that they're fairly brittle too. Currently, I'm saving up for, oh, and well, I already have enough points to buy a T34, although the low 50 CP control point um, value essentially stops me from buying some of these higher tanks, uh, at least for, for right now. So what I think I'll do is that I'll buy a bazooka, and I'll just keep that in the back. I mean, there's not much my, uh, my opponents can do here about that. And I'll throw up a few more uh, infantrymen just to sort of keep these guys at bay. And we might even go for um, an MG of sorts uh, later on as we sort of control these points right now. So, um, generally speaking, I mean, I play a lot of the games at 100 CP where you can typically have two, maybe three squads of infantry, um, a few AT guns, and a single tank, or alternatively two tanks. Um, with that sort of said, I'm, rather, uh, I'm actually rather unused to this uh, low 50 CP uh, value, although I suppose this encourages some of these um, infantry-only games, which is fair. Yeah, I want this bazooka guy too. I see his his chaffy over there, and those things should, I say should, not um, it would, have low, uh, low sight. So what I can do here is that I want this guy to crawl. And I just want him to stay over here, so if that tank ever pushes up, we can pop out, put a shot in it, and disappear. I like what this guy has done here. He's, ta he's taken this uh, little alleyway and converted into uh, a little defensive location, so that's kind of neat. Um, and they're going to drive the tank away into my, my buddy's sector, and I hope, I hope that he has some sort of defense, because I am uh, I'm going to be doing something else. Looks like they're still trying to push our... Uh, are those bombs on the ground? Yeah, they are, huh. Looks like they're still trying to push up here, and they brought themselves... They bought themselves a heavy howitzer somewhere back there to do so, so that is also rather interesting. Um, let's see what this howitzer is, because I want to figure out... Ah, it's over there. Picking off my infantrymen, so I don't, I don't necessarily care about that. Um, phew, let's see what we can do about that. We're accumulating a ton of points. T with the Americans, I, and I think I showed this to you guys last video or in a video, but you can simply just run over those um, those fixed emplacements fairly easily. Um, and, and typically, I mean, that's, that's my preferred way of getting rid of them, actually. Now, I want to get rid of that um, little howitzer that they have back there, but uh, it looks like we should be able to uh, just sort of stomach the losses right now and um, save our points. Again, saving points is fairly crucial for uh, for use in another day. They did take off one of my machine gunners, so I'll buy another one. And I'll put this guy on standby. And let's see where I can just sort of chug him. I think I'll chuck them back here because then they did have to expose the, the howitzer. If I put them near these brass plating things, here, let's grab this guy. If I put this machine gunner right here, he should be able to cover the point in its entirety, although it'll make it so that the, uh, the enemy has a bit of trouble hitting us. And they are gonna try to howitzer us. I know he has some troops behind one of these uh, container stacks. So I'm gonna try to uh, drop a nade down there. Yeah, there we go. That's that's my preferred grenade drop. Um, it goes up into the air and it puffs and it sucks all of them into a gigantic uh, ball of sorts. Now, I wonder if you can get up here onto these uh, oil tank things. No, he's gonna send some guys to react, which is fine. That's gonna push. Uh, that's gonna put some pressure onto him. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, the portions in RTS is. I mean, it's it's down to the psychology of it. And if we can force him, uh, he has he has a ton of troops there. Is our guy gonna make it? Yes, he did. I didn't say I didn't think he'd live. Um, and to bring a Sherman tank, or at least I believe that's a Sherman tank. No, it's a Hellcat uh, light tank destroyer. Uh oh, my game has frozen up. Would appear as though. There we go. So I mean, if he comes up close here, we should actually be able to take out Caleb the Cools as his uh, health cat over here. But uh, for now, I mean, I'm gonna get our guy to rotate and just really look into this general direction. 
And um, if anybody comes out over here, he should be able to, the AI should be able to just instantaneously react and uh, pop off a few shots. So we'll do that. Um, in the meantime, I suppose we'll buy a T70. And with our T70, we will try to advance up here a little bit. I'm just going to individually buy a few of these uh, Papasa armed, uh, SMG armed troops to sort of move up here. What's going on over here? They have some anti-tank guns and some other stuff, some other good stuff over here. When I had played the first game, I mean, those AT guns would actually come with a fair amount of uh, he heavy, ex high explosive ammunition. So you could actually use them, um, not as anti-tank guns, but more or less infantry guns, and just really siege the living crap out of people with them. Um, but I think they changed it in a patch, and they made it so that you can't necessarily do that anymore, and um, now they are actually fairly heavily focused on um, taking out tanks. So just an interesting tidbit. Now I'm gonna get my tank, come up here, load HE. And yeah, the uh, the game does a fair job at modeling the explosion, so you can do that. Or you don't necessarily have to, uh, I don't want that Hellcat to see me. Or get uh, concussed by that uh, howitzer over there. But the game does a very, very good job in doing dealing, uh, dealing with the concussive effects of high explosive rounds. So if you hit near the people, we're just generally uh, speaking behind sandbags, you should actually be able to concuss the uh, the people there. So what I want to do here is I'm not sure about this location. And because my tank fires off uh, HG at a fairly fast speed, I can just put off a few shots here and there. And I want to duel that health, I want to uh, duel that Hellcat. I want to take that thing down but uh, the only problem is that that thing is fairly, it's going to be fairly, uh, it has a longer gun range than us, though it has a lesser um, turret. Ooh, damn. That shot bounced off of its uh, frontal armor here, so I'm, I'm actually rather surprised it bounced and it didn't take that thing out. Those chaffies, I mean, they don't, they don't have very heavy plating on, on it just in general. The thing about these half cats is that they're fairly brittle, though they have um, the maximum gun range for the cannons inside the game, uh, excluding artillery pieces, is 180 meters, I believe, or whatever the in-game units is. So it'd be, um, if you go into the direct uh, aim mode, you'll see here that it has the uh, the range count on it. Um, the maximum of most tanks will be 180, and that Hellcat actually has that maximum amount. Um, it's it's not necessarily that it's we're no, it's fairly useful in just sniping tanks from long range, um, is the main thing. So anyhow, I'll see you guys next time when we do another multiplayer commentary.